So maybe you can say how Town Crier works because it's like, how do you, what's your vision? You're now partnering with, with Wolfram, Wolfram Alpha and in, in, in sort of exploring this partnership of uh, data and uh, the blockchain. What's your vision for a possible distributed version of Wolfram Alpha? Well, you know, the first step is just say, can we use this as a, a feed? And they can be what Bloomberg is to the financial markets. You know, so you have a terminal and you have something and there's always a value of at least offering choice. And so it's not like we're anti-chain link or we're picking winners and losers. It's an open protocol. It's an open system. So if we're successful, chain link will migrate or it will at least support us because they like money. You know, they like users. They like liquidity. It's a disservice to their community not to support a potential customer set. But, you know, you're going to have a spectrum from the desire to do a completely decentralized aggregation, curation, injection, and veracity attestation to a completely centralized, vertically integrated set. You need to be able to have that whole spectrum and offer that to the smart contract developer to decide you know, what is what makes sense. By the way, a lot of cases, they're gonna be their own Oracle. So for example, the World of Warcraft example that I gave, well, you know, it's a completely centralized thing. It's a video game run by a single company. I, there's no sense in saying that we're somehow going to decentralize that. What they're just trying to do is extend their currency or NFTs or whatever into new marketplaces. So the minting of that is controlled by a single entity and the world state of that, you ha just have to trust Blizzard to inject that into the system. You could try to imagine some sort of like, you know, sentinel group of people within the game who keep Blizzard honest, but it's completely unnecessary because they can change the rules of the system arbitrarily. So in that case, you're optimizing around efficiency and cost reduction. So you'd, you'd want a single feed that gets injected into the system from that. If you look at a stable coin that's algorithmic and it's basing its value on the aggregation of many different exchanges, that's the polar opposite example. Because there you're saying, okay, what's the price of my asset relative to some basket? But what, how do I know that the price feeds I'm looking at are accurate? You'd have to look at Binance and Bittrex and all these other things, or maybe there's conventional Forex exchanges or something like that. Okay, well, how do you weight that? And how do you clip outliers and you know these types of things? That's a completely different conversation. And there's a lot more mechanics you have to put in for that bundling and attestation of the veracity of the data feed. And what happens if you get it wrong? Your stable coin gets mispriced and everything goes to hell. And you know the markets will eventually correct it for arbitrage-seeking behavior, but anything that was built on that will fail in the uh, in the short term. So Oracle's really just a game of you know you have to build a standardized interfaces and make it as easy as possible for people to do that, and then let people choose how they want to inject data and what level of assurance do they need behind that. And the question is how much do you leave to the user versus how much does the protocol take care of for you and and it's it's a difficult design question. For our part, you know, we, we love working with Steve and Wolfram, and they're they're a great company, and they really have some bright people there. And we know on the data set they're, they're second to none, and mm -hmm. because not only do they have it, it's computable. You can do all kinds of things and manipulate with a very yeah. rich query language. So that's a great thing, and we want to make sure that that's accessible to developers and Cardano. But remember, they're like Bloomberg; it's a centralized feed in that respect. So if you want to build a chain link s competitor, you know, there's other protocols you could do for that. Now you asked about Town Crier, and that was that was an attempt to kind of uh, you know, like sweep the oceans with the net, you know, get some uh, get the data through a decentralized way. I uh, and that was just saying, hey, let's use trusted hardware to go read law, all kinds of websites and other things. And because it's trusted hardware, the scraping is non-biased. You know, if you find something inconvenient to whatever the person who's scraping is, it the trusted hardware will still do it and it can't be changed. You'd have to manipulate SGX to do that. Uh, so that's great, but you still run into the problem of how do you wire that together? The underlying websites still don't have any notion of veracity or reputation behind yeah. them. And then you also have the issue of storage. Where the hell do you put all of it? Yeah. If you have exabytes of data, what's the incentive for that? That's the dream of the semantic web. I still think is a fascinating idea how to basically convert the internet into um, a court, like, um, a knowledge base that you can you can query, you can integrate in the same way you did with Wolfram Alpha, but much bigger. Right. But that that means basically revolutionizing the way we put the internet together. Which I, I think these ideas of off chain data will um, will motivate people because there's a lot of money to be made in right. creating. Finally, there's money to be made with a semantic web. 